Welcome to Relish Books. Today I'm talking about an author who I think deserves to be considered one of our great classic authors, and that is James Harriet. Um, I have some of his books here. That's not all of them. I've read the first three of these, and I'm working on this one. The um, So there's All Creatures, Great and Small, All Things Bright and Beautiful, All Things Wise and Wonderful, the Lord God made them all, and there's, um, yeah, there's more than that, and they are story collections, they're not novels, so anybody who's not really into that, um, genre, or anybody who really wants, like, a lot of, um, action and a lot of dramatic plot, that's not what these books are, but his writing is really, really good. He is not just I think he's thought of as like this um, heartwarming kind of author and his stories are like really fun and funny and um, neat and people think about, you know, people think about the stories, which is, which is good, but his writing is so good. Um, so I just wanted to talk about him today and encourage you if you haven't read the books to really give them a read because um, probably most everybody has heard of James Harriet or has heard of like a, one of the TV shows or something um, but I'm not sure how much his um, actual books are read anymore. I know as a kid I read his um, children's versions of some of the stories which are also really good but um, they are more just like um, interesting and heartwarming. They're missing a lot of the greatness of his actual books. Um, even though they are really, really good and great for kids, but, um, so I hadn't really thought about reading his full length books until I was a lot older. And as soon as I did though, I was really, really pleasantly surprised by the writing. And I think the, the biggest thing that was like a surprise and is not so much like in his children's books, um, was his humor. He is a fantastic humorous writer. His comedic timing is really stunning and it's so difficult to do that. Comedic timing in a story is so hard. Like I can't even, I can't imagine trying. It's so perfectly done. Like his build up to things. Um, and the first and second books in particular, a lot of them are like funny stories. Um, another thing that's sad in his children's books is that two of the best characters from these books aren't even in them, and that's his employer, um, Siegfried, and Siegfried's younger brother, Tristan, who are just hilarious. They are, uh, they are the best characters in the story. The three of those guys together doing their things, um, going about their veterinary practice is just super, super fun. So, um, James Harriet was, um born in 1916 and he died in 1995. The books are set around the 1930s to the 1950s um, and they're mostly about his vet practice but they also are just about his life and um, one of them in particular, um, number three, All Things Wise and Wonderful, is a lot of his like stories about um, when he went into the service during the World War and um, although he, ended, he never ended up actually seeing, like, um, combat because he, um, some health thing disqualified him, I think. He was discharged because of, um, he wasn't, like, considered fit, but he was in the, um, he was in the Air Force and he trained and all that. He, you know, learned to fly and everything. Um, so that one is, like, more serious and there's not as much of his stuff at home, but he still kind of balances. There'll be, like, a chapter of him, like, what he's doing in the, um, in the Air Force, and then there'll be, like, it'll be, like, him thinking back to some story of his vet practice, so still really good. Um, the fourth one that I'm on right now, my biggest disappointment is that it's a bit later, and, um, Siegfried and Tristan are not in it much at all. Tristan has now moved away, um, maybe even gotten married. I think Siegfried might be married. Anyway, it's just not as, it's not as funny. Still really, really good though. 
Um, so James Harriet is actually a pen name. His name was James White. And so I assume that most of the characters in the story, in the stories are also um, changed from the original names. Um, I know that his wife, like, um, she's always called Helen in the books. Her name is actually Joan. Um, and so Siegfried and Tristan might be made up names too. Um, but anyway, something that I think is super interesting and I think um, James Harriet reminds me of like Laura Ingalls in this way and that he was a man who lived his whole life doing something that was not writing and then like later in life he started producing these phenomenally written stories and it's like where did that come from you know authors spend years and years working so hard to perfect this um this talent and I mean he spent like he literally had this whole other career he was a vet for almost 50 years and then he was writing these things that people who you know try to be writers can't do anything like um and I think kind of like with Laura um it just came largely from a lifetime of study and he doesn't talk about it a lot in his books but in one of the recent chapters I read um, there was kind of this clue for me. I was like, okay, if this explains some of it. He mentions being a big reader um, throughout his books, but he doesn't, again, he doesn't talk about it a ton. But there was this interchange. He had this um, student vet with him uh, who was also um, a big reader. And they had this thing where they would quote um, like passages from great books. And the other would like say, um, like, who... Um, what book it was from and who had written it. And you realize in these little exchanges just how well read he is. Like the other guy can say a line from uh, Hemingway or Fitzgerald or Shakespeare and James can say what it's from and who wrote it. And I was like, I was just this little interchange and you realize not only does he read all the classics um, of the time and um, you know, like Shakespeare and everything, but he knows them so well, he basically has them memorized. And I think when you take in that much, I think that's probably a large reason why he was able to write so well. He also did keep a diary um, throughout the years, and so I'm sure that helped um, practicing writing and also um, so that he could remember the events so clearly that he writes about. I'm not really sure. I would really, really like to know how close the stories are to what actually happened. Because of course he changes things like names and like in his children's books, you know that he changes events um, somewhat sometimes because when you read some of the same stories in his um, longer books, they're switched around a bit. You know that some of the events he changed to make them work better for his children's books. So I would really like to know how accurate they are, especially all the super funny, like wild stuff that the guys get into. Um, I have a feeling it's true, though, because a lot of the time, you know, truth is, like, stranger than fiction. Some of the things that they do together are, are really crazy. Um, these are super fun to, like, read aloud. I would read them aloud with my sisters sometimes. Um, the funniest stories. Um, and they're super funny, but they're also really, really lovable. You come to really care about the characters, um, James and Siegfried and Tristan and... Again, they just have this really great um, friendship and, you know, most of the time they're joking around and being ridiculous and Siegfried is an exceedingly frustrating person. And then there are, like, the moments when you see them, you know, when they're going away to war or whatever and um, you see how much they really deeply care about each other and it's really touching. So, yeah, he is a amazing author. Again, his comedic timing is like, he's one of the best. He's really fantastic. Um, you know, other writers, if you read what they say about Harriet, they're so impressed um, that this vet was able to just suddenly become such a fantastic writer. But like I said, I think it's important to realize, I mean, some people probably can, but even when it seems like somebody just out of nowhere has this amazing talent. Usually it does come from years of years of reading, years of writing. Um, so I don't know, I just think that's an important an important thing to note. Again, kind of like Laura Ingalls, she um, she was a teacher. She clearly studied all her life. 
she, um, you know, it makes mention in some of the earlier books, like how well she was at writing in school. And then of course, like with Mary being blind, she really stretched her abilities of description because she was constantly describing everything. So these talents don't just come out of nowhere. Um, not for him, not for her, but it's still so amazing. Um, that he had this long and really tremendous, um, veterinary career and also a, um, brilliant writing career. So anyway, if you haven't read James Harriet, um, definitely do that. I think if you appreciate good writing, if you appreciate, um, comedic writing and just kind of this look at, um, a whole different way of life, um, in a time and place that's, mostly gone now. Um, I think you'll really, really like it. Um, don't just write it off as like, you know, just these, you know, nice heartwarming tales. They are really quality, really excellent. So anyway, I was just thinking about James Harriet today and, um, yeah, see you next time.